Sorry about that, mixed it up straight away. Thanks, Ian, and good morning, everyone. The Australian dairy industry exited 2012 in a landscape of lower milk prices, lower dairy product prices on the world market. Uh, dry conditions this summer and flooding rains for some uh, have also meant increased feed costs and, many farm and for many farmers and feed pressures going into the 2013 winter. All this low prices, higher costs is pressuring Australian dairy farmer incomes. Today I want to look at the, the factors at play behind this scene, our outlook for the coming 2013-14 season and the five-year outlook to 2017-18. So here's what I'll be covering this morning. First, world prices for dairy products. They've been coming down uh, quite sharply over the past two years, as Ian indicated, but they're forecast to rise in the short term. And they've been on the way up in, in recent, uh, recent months, as Ian indicated, um, prices uh, in the last GDT event climbed 10%, and whole milk powder, I, th I think, jumped 18%. The demand outlook is improving, and I'll go into the factors around this. Uh, supply, world milk production is rising and will continue to rise over the medium term. The rise in supply will have an impact on world prices. I'll then turn to Australia and look at the impact of the world outlook on the Australian dairy industry and farm incomes. And improved world prices uh, in the short term will translate to higher farm gate prices, but. Over the medium term, we're expecting these to moderate. And then I'll uh, finally look at our, our export performance. So first, um, let's look at world prices uh, for dairy products. You can see here we've had a fair degree of volatility in dairy product prices over the past several years. Large falls in 2008-09 as demand dropped, coinciding with the global financial crisis, recovery over the following couple of years and declines again as a result of the weak global economic conditions of the past year or so. Next year, world dairy product prices are forecast to rise, driven by increased demand in developing countries, particularly in Asia, while only limited growth in supplies are expected from the key exporting countries of Europe and the United States. World prices for whole milk powder and skim milk powder are forecast to rise by 4.5% and 3% next year. Butter uh, is forecast to rise close to 2% and cheese 2.4%. Uh, this is in nominal terms. Demand for dairy products in the short term is expected to remain firm, with demand in developing countries offsetting some weaker demand in the developed economies. So let's uh, look at some recent import demand for milk powders in these next two slides. For whole milk powder, you can see large increases in import demand in China and North Africa. Particularly startling is China, where only five years ago, uh, their imports were around 50,000 tonnes. And in 2013, the USDA is forecasting over 400,000 tonnes, an eight-fold increase. For uh, skim milk powder, you can see also um, the de developing countries of Asia is where the demand is coming from. Again, startling growth into China uh, with a 15% increase in imports forecast for 2013 to around 230,000 tonnes. Both the whole milk powder and skim milk powder imports reflect the strong growth in demand for infant formula milk powders in China. But there's also been steady increase in skim milk powder imports into Indonesia, um, which you can see in the, the bottom band there. Per person consumption of dairy uh, products is still low in the developing countries of Asia, but over the medium term, consumption is expected to grow as incomes and populations increase and economic development continues to take place. Given our geographic proximity, Southeast Asia is expected to remain a major market for Australia. Now, I am mindful of Mick Keogh, uh, just, just recently just telling us that geographic proximity is not something that we should rely on, but um, nevertheless, um, it, it's helping us in this situation. Growth in import demand in, in this region for other markets such as butter and cheese is also expected. 
Uh, for Australia, around 37% of our butter exports in 2011-12 were destined for Southeast Asia and 14% of our cheese exports, so a very important region for us. Now let's uh, we'll look at the global um, milk supply situation. And you can see here the key producers of dairy products uh, with the EU and the US by far the largest. But that's being followed by rapid growth in Indian and Chinese cow milk production. Global milk production is forecast to continue rising over the medium term. Uh, in the EU, expiry of milk quotas in 2015 is expected to result um, in higher production from the number of the larger producing member states. Um, drought has been affecting US production, but over the medium term, as those feed grain prices come down, US production is likely to expand again. Um, in South America, um, Brazil is increasing production, but domestic demand in Brazil is also expanding rapidly. Uh, in New Zealand, milk production will rise at a lower rate than the past 10 years as the conversion rate of farmland into dairying uh, slows. Now, Australia and even New Zealand are small in the scale of global milk production. However, with their small domestic markets, they feature much more prominently as exporters. So here are world dairy exports, and you can see here the dominance of New Zealand, particularly in butter and whole milk powder. And Australia, with our share of cheese at 12% of world production and skim milk powder um, at 11% of exports, I'm sorry, uh, is, is also um, featuring strongly. The other key exporters are the EU and the United States, with their dominance varying by, um, by commodity, as you can see here. The value of Australia's dairy exports is forecast to rise by close to 2% in the next year to around $2.3 billion. Uh, we're expecting, with that, a 5% increase in the value of Australian cheese exports, a 3% increase in skim milk powder exports, um, but that's being partially offset by slightly lower butter and whole milk powder exports. With uh, lower world prices in real terms over the medium term, the value of Australian exports is projected to ease towards the end of our projection period. So what are our price projections? Um, with demand growing over the medium term, particularly from the developing economies of Asia, as I said, uh, also the Middle East and, and North Africa, higher milk production in the key exporting countries uh, will lead to prices tailing off in real terms over the second half of our projection period. Despite this, uh, world dairy product prices are projected to average around 25 to 30 per cent higher in real terms over this five-year period when we compare it to the five years leading up to 2006-07. Now, having considered the world demand and supply situation, I want to now turn to the Australian dairy outlook. So we can see here the same volatili volatility in dairy product prices in, in recent years applied to farm gate milk prices received by Australian dairy farmers. Next year, farm gate milk prices are forecast to rise 2% to 39.4 cents per litre, uh, the national average, but to fall slightly over the outlook period in real terms to average around 36 cents per litre in today's dollars. Australian milk production is forecast to rise by just over 1% to 9.6 billion litres next year, with uh, some expansion in dairy herds expected in Victoria, southern New South Wales and Tasmania. And expansion in these states will be offset somewhat by lower production in the regions that rely more on the drinking milk market, um, in Queensland, uh, northern New South Wales, um, Western Australia. A relatively strong Australian dollar is expected to continue to place down the pressure on returns to Australian dairy exporters, ultimately feeding back to farm gate prices. And you can see that here in this example, um, using the example of world cheese prices denominated in both US dollars and Australian dollar terms. In US dollar terms, cheese prices strengthened considerably over this period, um, over the early 2000s through to our forecast of 2013-14. Um, 
so that's the red line, but in Australian dollar terms, the trend has actually been slightly downward, and that shows how the appreciation of the Australian dollar uh, against the US dollar has eroded gains for exporters on the world market. So translating all that information into dairy farm financial performance, Farm cash income for the Australian dairy industry is projected to decline in 2012-13, uh, this current year we're in, because of lower farm gate uh, milk prices and increases in cash costs. Nationally, uh, average farm cash income for dairy farms is projected to decline to $95,000 in 2012-13, and that's down from um, a bit over $143,000 per farm in 2011-12. Now while this is a substantial year-on-year -year fall, it's only around 2% below uh, the average for the 10 years uh, prior up to 2011-12. But that's the national average. Farm cash incomes are expected to be substantially down in each state, but the extent of the fall and where they lie in relation to the 10-year average differs between states. In Victoria, farm cash income uh, averages $98,000 or around 5% above the average of the previous 10 years in real terms. But farm cash incomes for many Victorian farms were low through most of the 2000s due to drought and reduced availability of irrigation water, so the 10-year average is low to start with for Victoria. In New South Wales, farm cash income is projected to decline to an average of 109000 per farm, and that's still close to the average for the previous 10 years. In Queensland and Western Australia, farm cash, farm cash income is projected to be around 40% below the 10-year average. South Australia, 30% below, and Tasmania, 16% below the 10-year average. Now, variation across dairy farms nationally and within states um, also occurs. So nationally, 21% of dairy farms are projected to have a negative farm cash income in 2012-13. Uh, that varies across states. In New South Wales, 13% um, of, of farmers are expected to experience a cash loss. Victoria, 22%. Queensland, 24%. Western Australia, 15%. South Australia, 36%. And Tasmania, 10%. Now, I mentioned uh, farm cash costs contributing to farm income declines. Last year, in 2011-12, the dairy industry farms in all states, except Western Australia, uh, fodder expenditure increased as farmers looked to increase milk production. Small increases were recorded in most other categories of farm cash costs, uh, with the exception of interest payments, which, which actually dropped back a little. And overall, total cash costs for Australian dairy industry increased by about 2% in 2011-12 uh, compared with 2010-11. In, in this current year, 2012-13, much higher fodder expenditure and increased expenditure on fertiliser and electricity and labour is projected. But we do expect farmers to cut back on purchases of dairy and beef cattle. Um, as well as repairs and maintenance as they respond to reduced farm receipts. So this will offset some of this increase in costs um, and have an impact on their bottom line. So now I'll just uh, summarise all that. Um, world prices for dairy, dairy product prices, we're forecasting them to rise in the short term, but also to decline in real terms over the medium term. The demand outlook is improving and this is being driven by developing countries, particularly in Asia. Supply, uh, world market production is, uh, world uh, milk production is rising and will continue to rise over the medium term. We see Australian milk supplies continuing to expand. Improved world prices in the short term will translate to higher farm gate prices, but over the medium term these will moderate. Uh, in real terms, and the value of our dairy exports is forecast to rise by close to 2% next year, but to ease towards the, the end of the projection period in real terms. Thank you for your attention.